popping people, big dudes, sporty thieves. Marlon Brando, rest in peace, died a hero one time. Hold on. Sporty Thieves, a Yonkers, New York trio featuring King Kirk, Big Dubes, and Marlon Brian Brando, who passed away in 2001. Today's feature is a group from the 90s, early 2000s that were really onto something and in a lot of ways were just in the right time to have success, even if it were a niche based audience. They are most noted for their anti-feminism and male perspective rebuttals to songs by female groups like Destiny's Child and TLC, who attempted to popularize the idea of using men for monetary gain and if he can't provide that, then he's somehow a scrub or less of a man. Their song No Pigeons, released in May of 1999 as direct response to TLC's No Scrubs, became the group's biggest song that peaked at number 1 on the hip-hop charts and 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Today, the record has sold over 600,000 copies. At the time, no other hip-hop acts were focusing on this lane so presented the group with an interesting transition from what they were previously known for, which were lyrics and cinematic approach, which you could also say was a bit ahead of its time. Their debut album was a standout in the late 90s that just missed the mark of being a classic some would say, because although its concept was like visiting a movie theater, and each song would act as many films taking place in an imaginary world of anything's possible, it was critiqued for bad skits and too many songs that went away from the concept of the album. Either way, it was successful for being a first of its kind and gave Sporty Thieves their start in music. But the ride wouldn't last long. A few years after its release, they would lose member Marlon Bryant, who was hit by an alleged drunk driver who swerved onto the sidewalk he was walking after leaving a local deli around 3 a.m. in the morning. He reportedly pushed a young boy out of the way just before being hit, but couldn't save himself, crushed by the van and died on the scene. After his death, the remaining group went into a more than 10-year hiatus as far as albums released and since then, you rarely ever heard from them. They didn't only have great concepts, but a unique opportunity to become just as big as a group as any in hip-hop. And for these reasons, that didn't happen. Salute to Joseph World for this request. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Sporty Thieves was a rap group from Yonkers, New York that made their rap debut in 1998 after being signed to rock a block slash Roughhouse Records in 1997. Things were moving fast for Sporty, from getting a deal to immediately going in to make their first album and having it released less than a year later featuring their standout and my personal favorite Sporty Thieves song, Cheapskate, that was a minor hit that led the album upon its release until No Pigeons went equivalent to viral in today's terms. They released a second album, self-titled in 2000, on member King Kirk's independent label after being released from Rough House and Rock a Block. Stunt number one, The Death of Brando. Rest in peace, Brando, man. Miss you and love you, boy. To be honest with you, when we lost Brando, that hit us hard. That's, that hit us real hard, you heard? Marlon Bryant was a beloved member of Sporty Thieves who's been described as the life of the room, always smiling, cracking jokes, and bringing an ease to a room that allowed everyone else to be themselves and create freely. He's also been described as the driving creative force by remaining members King Kirk and Big Dubes. He was responsible for coming up with the concept of the songs and worked on development of the hooks. He wasn't as charismatic on the mic as Kirk or Dubes, but his personality shined through in their videos as the group has acknowledged that there wouldn't be a Sporty Thieves without his presence. On May 11, 2001, around 3 a.m., Brian, aka Brando, was just leaving a deli when a minivan drove onto the sidewalk and hit him as he pushed a child from harm's way. The van crushed both his legs, sending his blood pressure plummeting. An ambulance got there while Brian was still alive, but he died shortly after on the scene. 
Much later, Big Dubes would admit that the loss of Marlon hurt the group and drove them into a grieving hiatus, and when the remaining two returned, they realized they were much different now and not as close or ready as they needed to be to keep making music post their friend and brother dying. For more than 10 years, the two worked mainly behind the scenes, both owning studios they would do music in and make money renting its use, but releasing a full-length project together as Sporty Thieves at the time without Brando just wasn't where neither Kirk nor Dubes was. They went on like this for years and before you knew it, the 2000s had passed and a few years into the new decade before Sporty Thieves would get back to releasing any sort of music. Stunt number two, parody rap. Sporty Thieves, after their street cinema album, would of course follow the success of their most popular song, No Pigeons, which you already know was direct response to No Scrubs and set the groundwork for a way the group could create some much needed notoriety. Songs came like Can't Pay Your Bills, Response to Destiny's Child, and Independent Man in response to the female version also sung by Destiny's Child. This catapulted the group to the forefront of anti-feminism in rap done on a level such as those remixes going viral. Although comedic, parody versions that didn't seem to take things too serious, it typecasted the group in a way and placed them in a fun for now box. They had other songs like Cheapskate, If I Look Like, Hit It Up off the Best Man movie soundtrack that served to empower men in ways females were attempting to lessen their significance. Although this all gave the group a shot in the arm and another possible wave to ride, it hurt them because they weren't taken too serious for much longer and expected to always have a parody song waiting in the wings. Problem there is that meant they had to wait for another R&B group to make one, which wasn't an everyday occurrence. The parody rap lane is not one that faded away quickly though, and had it not been for their friend's death and their untimely hiatus, who knows how far they could have pushed that lane. Stunt number three, something's missing. Lastly, when it comes to the group Sporty Thieves, it always felt like something was missing or not done the best. Even when they did find a lane they could own, their songs weren't recognized for having the best lyricism and even their concepts were criticized for not being completely and correctly thought out to the point when the consumers received the product they could easily understand the intentions. It could be because of how fast they were moving from the day they got signed, or them not having a big enough label push on Rock-A-Block slash Roughhouse. For whatever reason, they've always came off as second best to whatever was being released in rap, especially around that time where hip-hop was in one of its golden ages. If the lyrics were dope, the hooks or beat wasn't impressive. If a breakthrough song or album was on the way, their friend and member passes. If they grieved and got over that, a hiatus ensued and it all forced lost time and stole their potential. All in all, Sporty Thieves were a nice rap group that had a satirical, comedic vibe to them, but they could also spit, like they've shown on their debut album. Other than being typecasted as the parody response rap guys, they had to deal with a heavy loss of their brother, and then a hiatus that essentially ended their careers as their fan base either grew out of their target audience or stopped caring completely. Today, Big Dubes and King Kirk still release music here and there, but mainly focus behind the scenes. They were a solid rap group that at least is still being mentioned today. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music, and I'm out.